status lights. Now, personally, I do not like what Aquahata has called these things. Let, let's look at this one for the low temp cutoff status. Low temp cutoff status. That is the, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be politically correct. That is the stupidest thing to name that light. <laughs> it really is. I, it makes no sense to me. So this light turns on. So we turn on our aqua hot. Our aqua hot's on. It's on right now. Okay. So what this light means, the green light that's on right now. Here, I'll cover my, see how the green light right there? That is the low temp cutoff status. Well, what low temperature cutoff status? Well, does that mean that the low temperatures cut off or on? Or what does that mean? Basically, what it's saying is that the, um, the domestic hot water is not flowing. <laughs> okay. So if we turn on our domestic hot water, that light will turn off. Did you get that out of the low temperature cutoff status? I don't. So basically what this is saying is there's no hot water running through the system. Okay. The, the aqua hot is off right now, but if it was on, then this green light would be on. If the, if the switch is on, if somebody turned the switch on, that light turns on. Um, so a lot of times you could tell the difference between this switch being on and this status light down here to determine if the, oh, okay, let's talk about that. So if your aqua is at temperature and everybody's happy, the aqua takes about 15 minutes plus or minus depending on ambient temperature and all these other variables. But the aqua takes about 15 minutes to go from ambient temperature, depending on what that temperature is. Right now it's what, about 65 or so, up to 180 degrees, okay? Um, when it gets to 180 degrees, the aqua will turn off, but your status light will stay on, meaning I am satisfied, but I will start back up again if I need to. And so you start turning on your different zone heats. These will turn green based off of the zone. The next video we're gonna be getting into, we're gonna actually be firing this thing up and seeing it. Um, and starting with the zones, we expect the pumps to turn on, okay? Now, let's talk about pumps. Uh, pump one is loop one, pump two is loop two, but pump one is gonna control zones one and five, okay? So if you have a zone one, and a zone five, then when pump one turns on, that's gonna tr control zones one and five. The manufacturer of your coach should have figured out that pump one, zone one and five are gonna be in the front half or where, however they ran their, their loop. This could be in a boat, it could be on a garbage truck, it could be on a D9 bulldozer, whatever, I don't know. But pump one is pumping through zones one and five, okay? So that is to say, if I get a call for heat on zone one or zone five, that's gonna to correspond to pump one. Pump two is zones two, three, and four. So if I get a call for heat for zone two, three, or four, it's gonna to correspond to pump two turning on. Pump three, I don't like the term pump three. I would rather this be called stir pump. The stir pump on the 450, basically, if I do not, ha if, I, if my heating status is on, and my, my aqua is running, I need to stir my tank, don't I? I wanna know what the temperature is at my control thermostat. Now, if, if we could bring the camera in here, but if, if this is the bulk, yeah, let's do it. This is the bulkhead wall of, if I take the cover off and I'm looking inside of my aqua hot, here's my, my Wabasto burner right here. Up in this corner is my control thermostat, okay? Um, so the control thermostat's up here, the burner's down here, the stratification of the water, maybe, maybe it's hotter down here than here. So there's a pump that takes the fluid from the top corner to the bottom corner and just stirs the tank. That's pump three's job. So pump three is my stir pump. It's just stirring my tank so that I can get an accurate reading way over here of what the boiler antifreeze in here is about six gallons plus or minus of boiler antifreeze in my tank. Um, so pump three is my stir pump. They call them summer pumps. I don't know why they call it a summer pump. To me, it's a stir pump. But you would never have a situation where pump three is on and either pump one or two. If pump one or two or both turn on, three turns off. So in other words, that is to say, if this is my stir pump, there's really no reason to be stirring my tank if I'm coming through either one of these two loops, okay? So if these loops are off, stir pump's on. If these loops are on, stir pump's off. Pump one, goes to zones one and five, pump two goes to two, three, and four, okay? If I have any red lights here, then that means that there's a problem. Typically, the pump has failed internally. You have to replace it. I've got a video on replacing pumps. You have to drain all your boiler antifreeze out. Uh, if it's still new, you can put it back in. Sometimes we also replace it, but now you're, it's, it's up to the customer what they wanna do, it's their unit. Um, now, 
Um, the heating element is heating element. Heating element is basically secondary heat. You're not going to be able to take a long hot shower on your heating element. Um, the uh, engine preheat pump, a lot of times when you're driving down the road, hey man, you could totally flip that switch on and what you're going to do, leave, leave your, where's my thing? If you're traveling down the road, you can easily um, leave your burner off, leave your electric on, but turn on your, your preheat, your diesel preheat pump. And what that's going to do is that's going to help heat your water. It's circulating the water through the antifreeze of the engine. It's its, its own separate loop. You're not mixing boil, um, engine antifreeze and the aqua antifreeze, but that loop goes to the engine, heats it all up. And so by just having your diesel preheat switch on, you're circulating that. And you could probably take a hot shower just from driving down the road. Uh, it wouldn't be unusual for you to be driving four, five, six hours with this on. And then you get to your campsite, you got hot water and you've never had your diesel or your electric on. So there's a little trivia there. I think that we've covered enough information where maybe the mystery does not hurt you anymore. Now, let's say that um, where you're located, you have a lot of aquat opportunities there and you wanna start a business working on aquats. Go to the school, it's a fantastic school, read the manuals, great, watch all my videos. If you're interested in starting your own business, doing something like this, um, what uh, Trisha, my work colleague and I, what we've done is on our Patreon site, we have put together a how to start your own mobile RV service business series. I think it's like 50 something videos um, that we've got only available on our Patreon site for those folks that support us on Patreon. And then we're working on a how to grow your business. And so maybe you like Aqua Hots. I think they're a blast. They're a lot of fun if you understand them. You can make a really lucrative living just traveling around becoming the Aqua expert and servicing them at dealerships and RV parks. And then you can even go to rallies and things like that just being the Aqua Hot guy or Aqua Hot gal. So hopefully these videos add value to you, but we do have other things for you. We have tools that you could use, tech cards that you could use. I am in the process of developing another interface for here and here um, to help diagnose it even more. So those will be coming. Keep an eye out on our page for new tools that I make as I get time. They're a lot of fun. And um, if you're interested in starting a business, check out our Patreon site um, because that's where we're storing all that content. And uh, so if this added value to you, give us a thumb up. Thank you for your attention. Share this with your friends. And so happy camper say my RV works. And so we're going to carry on to the next video in this series where we're actually going to fire this thing up and start following the trail to see if we can't figure out why there's no heat in that front loop. All right. See you on the next video. Bye.